Hi, Mickey Bone Gang. Vinny here. This time coming at you from West Central Louisiana. Dang near to Texas. But we're doing a little trapping. Got all my trapping stuff. Got my buddy Frank's full wheeler. Amazing. Amazing piece of property we're on. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later uh, once I can get a hold of Mr. Rodney. Really awesome fella that uh, manages this place. And we'll get to the who, what's, when, where's, why's, and how's of uh while we're trapping and managing uh this particular property but we set out some traps yesterday and we're about to go check uh a little trap line we just did one little stretch and then we're gonna put out a bunch of more traps today but anyway let's get down to checking them traps and uh well, we'll just pick it up from there section uh, where we put the traps this here is a deer uh, kind of like a gut pile whenever they uh, kill a deer skin the deer the parts that can't be used uh, gets put right here so we put traps all the way around it that way uh, because the coyotes come and they eat it and other animals come and eat it and dispose of it and uh, they got traps all around here one two three four five at least like five or six traps nothing in any of them but uh this is what the coyotes it's not a coyotes felt about the whole situation. He had a nice big old steamy pile just to let us know what he thought about. All right, guys, right here, let me show you something. Get this out of the way. Get on back up. Ugh. Right here, that looks like a bobcat print right there, right there. You can see how it's rounded. There's no claw marks right here at the end of the toes. I don't know what this is. Something looks like a rabbit right here ran through. But anyway, there's a bobcat that's walking this path right here. So Mr. Chuck, who's over down the way right there, is an experienced trapper who I've been learning lots of the stuff I've been uh I've been doing here with this uh with this trapping situation. He said, go ahead and put a blind set. Now bobcat tends to walk in the same track. If he comes back around through here, he's gonna put his paw prints just about in the same spot. So he told me right here under these paw prints just to put a blind set, not bait, no flags, no nothing. When he walks back, he'll step right there, step in our little, uh, our little trap right there, and then we got him, got ourselves another bobcat. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna show y'all how I do that real quick. First of all, gotta dig us a little hole. See, here's his footprints right here. Gotta dig me a little spot for his trap bed. I want that trap to be subsurface so that the pan is laying flat right where, uh, Right where the top of the sorrel is. Ooh, that's some wet sand. Wet, sandy stuff. All right. Here we go. Got that spot there. That ought to be good. Then I'm going to punch a little hole right there in the middle. Ooh, goodness gracious. And that's where our chain and stuff's going to sit so this trap will sit flat. Got this little wolf fang looking thing right here. This is the, this is the anchor when this goes in the ground. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, I'll get to that in a second. Let me get this on there. I'm going to drop this whole thing right here, this tooth, straight into the dirt. And it's going to go in there straight like this. And then when you pull up on it, it's going to go flat. And it's going to grab the dirt like that. And it ain't going to be able to pull out. Just to let you know in case you carry it. I'm going to go ahead, drop this thing right there in the center of my hole. Oh my lord. I don't even need the hammer. Uh, 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 uh. All right, let's see. Hopefully that'll bite. Oh yeah, see? So if I pull it straight up, it's a little bit easier to come out, but he ain't gonna be pulling straight up. He's gonna be pulling off to the side. And as you can see, he ain't gonna be as strong as me and it ain't going nowhere. So I think, I think we might be good now. Good thing is with this clay sand mixture, whatever that's wet, this trap will bed real easy. And we ain't gonna have to worry about it moving none. This stuff's nasty. All right. All right, that's what we want. You see, any way I push on this trap, it ain't moving. So if you don't step on this pan and steps on the edge, it still ain't gonna go nowhere, which is exactly what we want. 
go set this thing it's got a night latch so these traps what they call a night latch they got a little audible click when i pull this pan down listen Whoop. that lets me know it is set it's a hair trigger step on that pan okay y'all got him now i'm gonna take my peat moss right here hold on now might be able to get a little bit of better angle if i do this number here huh how's that how's that it look more better all right Go look at what's on the bottom of these boots. Jeez, um, must weigh 10 pounds extra. Now what I probably should have done is not walk right here and kept that smooth. I don't know if that's gonna mess him up or not, but I'm gonna put this peat moss on top of it because if I pack that clay on top, it would get underneath that pan and it wouldn't be able to trigger. That pan wouldn't be able to go down, which won't release the dog, which won't release the jaws, which means we didn't get what we was aiming for. So I put this peat moss on there, cause even if it gets wet or whatnot, it ain't gonna uh ain't gonna hurt nothing, cause it gets cushiony. It's all cushiony. Got that like that. I might have put it a little too deep, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be okay. Now what we need to do is cover up this peat moss with the other stuff that looks like this, that looks like this stuff he's walking on to hide it a little bit better. But I don't know if that's going to work with this stuff, but let's find out. Let's see if this will work. Eh, we can get a little bit in there. Nope, that turns into clay. We can make Play-Doh out of that. We got to find something else a little looser. A little looser goosa. Where are we going to find that at? Here we go. This ought to work. A little bit drier. Let's try that. Oh yeah, look, he's coming down right here. Probably. Oh no, that might be deers. That might be the deers. Oh yeah, that blends it a little bit better. I don't want much on my pan. I want it. Yeah, oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh me, yeah. Smooth that out a little bit. Oh yeah, I'd step in that. And now, what I'm gonna do, cause he's not gonna step, he's not gonna step on this. He gonna step right over that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right here. And he's gonna step over that. And that's gonna make him step right there in my pan. In theory. And so I hope, oh, uh, but uh, there you go. Blind set right there for you. All right, guys. Well, I guess uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, we, didn't, we didn't catch anything on that uh, running that trap line this morning. But I'm putting out a coyote set, and let me show you why. First of all, you can see I put this log here, and I'm gonna give him something to pee on. But I'm gonna throw this this piece of squirrel right in that hole right there, nice and deep, like so that they gotta really get in there. This is the trap set right here. But I'm gonna put some uh, some fox urine on there, because if you got a dog, you know this this a log was sitting out in the middle of nowhere right here, just where it don't belong. Your dog's gonna go straight there and pee on it. Not to mention, look at this fresh old, fresh old uh, coyote turd right there with all that hair in it. I'm gonna actually take some of this. Look at that. That's pretty fresh. I'm gonna take some of this and we're gonna go put it right next to it. Yeah, that don't get him curious. I don't know what will. But anyway. I set the trap just like we set that blind set, except for this time we got a log for him to pee on and a third for him to come investigate. And let me pour some of this fox urine on there. There we go. Some red fox urine. Put it about, about yee high where the coyote would cock his leg. And I'm gonna let it run right down. Look, it's running down the bottle. That ain't good. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I guess that'll do. Ooh, that's thing. I peed on that one. Boy, you wasn't lying about a trench. Uh-huh. Make it just wide enough. Put your trap right here. Put your hole here but at an angle okay. where he has to step down to look in it. And that big thing will make a 
Do you dig the trench smooth out that way? Yeah, just like this. Pile some of this along the sides, you know, but you want your trap about right here. Okay. You, you know, right there. All right. All right, guys, so what's happening here is this is gonna be a little bit different than the ones I showed you because this one was specifically for a bobcat. So it's gonna be a little bit different than a coyote. Basically the same thing, same kind of trap, same mud, the uh, dirt hole, but uh, a little bit of difference. I got my trap anchored down. Now I just gotta set the night latch, like so. Flip that jaw over like that. Make sure I don't set it off and catch my finger. And then I gotta get it covered up. But the difference is gonna be with this is we making a trench set so this is where the bobcat's walking you can see the prince right here and he's coming this way and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a trench all the way out here that way he's gonna follow that trench it's gonna guide him right down here he's gonna step on that trap trying to see in that hole and another thing we're gonna do differently is i'm gonna show you in a second we're gonna hang a flag something waving in the air that's gonna catch his attention because the difference between bobcats and the coyotes coyotes got a real good nose just like your puppy dog does but a cat's nose isn't as good, but their eyesight is, is, is very good. And they get curious, just like a little house cat. Dang a little something shiny or something wavy in front of them. They want to wanna come, come play with it. Similar to a bobcat, he's going to come check that flag out. And once he gets close enough, then he'll be able to investigate, see, and smell what we want him to see and smell. And then, uh, Bob's your uncle. Trap all set up. Trap buried. Got the, the little trench going on right here. Pretty little butterfly. Pretty little butterfly. Anyway, since we caught the last bobcat, get out of here, pretty little butterfly. Since we caught the last bobcat that I caught by the house on a, uh, a poodoo breath, I mean, logic only dictates that why wouldn't they like Galanu? So I got me a, a Galanu leg right here. Whole leg, look at that, foot on there and everything. I'm gonna stuff him in there. Get that up in there. There we go. Now what you don't want them to be able to do is just come right here and snatch them out of there. You want them to have to work for it, so. I'm gonna put that up in there. There we go, nice and deep. So he's gotta, gotta figure it out, gotta come in there. And I'm gonna put some feathers right here. I think I'm gonna put a few more feathers. Get some belly feathers from this thing. Like that, don't take much. Get down feathers right there, put a little bit up here. Oh yeah, now he's gonna be like, what the heck went in there? I wanna eat that. Now what we need, the only thing we got left is to hang something up where he can see from a distance. So. I mean, we got Gala new leg. Why not hang a Gala new wing? Let me cut this here wing off and we're gonna hang it from a string. Ooh, this looks good. Man, where'd that come from? This looks like them spears used to get at Mardi Gras. Slap a little plastic arrowhead on there and some feathers. People be going crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, we can knock off some of this stuff. Yeah, where's my knife? Where's my kniffy? Come here, kniffy. Put it like right here, maybe. Will it go in the ground? Of course not. That would be too easy. I was gonna figure. We gotta figure this here out. I was gonna figure. Gotta figure. Do some figuring. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Let me get back at you when I figure this out. There, there. You can see that little little wing just flapping in the breeze right there. Now what I got right here is a little piece of string, and we got a little lead weight on there and a swivel. That way it makes it easier for it to spin. This weight keeps it hanging down so the whole thing don't flip and flop. But they'll see that from a distance. And they're gonna come over here and investigate. They're gonna see some feathers right there. Be like, man, how that bird got in that hole? Let me figure it out. They're gonna stick their head in that hole and their foot in that pan, and guess what? Kaya, we got us some pork-like meat for dinner. Cause that's what it tastes like, in case y'all didn't know. Man, it done got a little warm. I done shed all my layers. It started off at like low, high 40s, low 50s, a little bit chilly for down here in Louisiana. And uh, now it's like in the 60s, feeling pretty good. Anyway, I'll pick up the camera if I find anything else interesting here on the trap line. If not, probably catch it when we uh checking them to Murray Murray. All right, guys, well, it's cold again, but it is the next morning and uh, we're about to go check the traps that we set. Hopefully we got something this morning. So uh, let's go. But first, all right guys, let me introduce you to Mr. Rodney McKay. 
right here, the land manager of the Leaf Center at Hodges Gardens. Did I say that correctly? Yes. All right, yeah, awesome. Right. So he's going to explain real quick why we're actually trapping uh, this property. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on, but um, I'm going to end up doing a podcast with Mr. Rodney uh, here before long, and we'll get into all kind of details. But anyway, guys, he's going to run down real quick while we're trapping this uh, this property and uh, all the awesome things that they're uh, trying to achieve. Thanks, Vinny. I appreciate you being here and, and doing some trapping for us and a little bit of the history. So this property opened up with Hodges Gardens in 1957 and the public started coming in. Now that was only 950 acres in the center of the property, but on 4,600 acres, there's all this other stuff going on, all this wildlife living out here. And because it was so closely tied to the public, there was no active or aggressive hunting on the property. Some of it was probably hush hush and not talked about or the neighbors were coming over. So when you have this wildlife, that's just growing willy nilly and then you jump into fast forward 2013, you start doing a burn regime where you're doing prescribed burn and promoting great wildlife habitat. Uh, we've been doing that now uh, since 2013. 2019 really got aggressive with it. We started noticing on all these fire lanes and all these trails that we're running around on taking care of these fires, it's like, man, we got a lot of tracks. Bobcats start putting cameras out. We start surveying wildlife. There's bobcats, there's foxes, there's coyotes, raccoons are everywhere. And then we start doing uh, nonprofit hunts for the handicapped veterans and, and youth. And we start realizing, hey, the deer's not the only thing eating our corn, you know, out of these feeders for these hunts, it's raccoons and a few other things, some possums. So we got in touch with uh, some Louisiana private lands biologists. And next thing you know, here we are three years later, we've been doing these trapping workshops for three years now, I believe. And you guys come in early and set a bunch of trap lines out. And so we're tallying up all those uh, predators and fur bears that y'all are catching and uh, next thing you know last year we started seeing a lot of turkeys our first poults that got big enough to fly and now I have turkeys everywhere we're still working on our quail we had quail in 2019 to the point where I actually had to draw put a put a map together to know where all these quail are at so uh, we're kind of riding the waves out with the quail but our turkeys have been on a steady increase and now we're seeing bobcat, fox, and coyote tracks along with turkeys on the same road uh, right now. We know that predator control is gonna be important and because y'all been coming for three years, I believe that did have a little bit to do with the, the uh, influx of turkeys that we're able to retain now. So we're glad to, that y'all are getting workshops out of this. We wanna be here available for the public to learn as part of our education initiative and uh, fulfilling our mission of Longleaf Wildlife Habitat uh, enhancement and conservation education so this does a few things for us and the wildlife are benefiting from it and now we're starting to see the the real reward from it and nothing we checked all the traps not a daggum thing so here's the next day again put a lot more traps out yesterday so hopefully hopefully we got something this morning uh so we're about to go check that i mean we got probably twice as many traps out now and uh, some good sign, some good sign where we put them traps. So if we ain't got nothing this morning, something ain't right. All right, here we are, the last trap. I think we checked them all. I think we checked them all. Oh, this is the last one we gotta check. None of them big animals, but we got that one raccoon and we got another raccoon. This one was actually a set for an otter not yeah an otter and uh raccoon ended up setting the trap All right, well, that raccoon has been dispatched, but that happens a lot of times. You'll set all of these traps thinking you're gonna get something nice and beautiful, end up with a raccoon or a possum. But that's all right, that's actually a couple of species that we're also uh, targeting for this trip anyway. So there you go. Now these probably won't get skinned today because we got a class actually, teaching a class uh, coming up in a couple of days that we're gonna be uh, doing a little skinning demonstration for. And I can't show you that unfortunately because uh, you know, YouTube gets their panties in a bunch every now and then whenever you, you show certain things sometimes it's fine sometimes it ain't so i'd rather not deal with that but uh you get the idea all right guys well there it is there's the two coons that are uh, dispatched and 
how pretty this one is. Of course, this one's probably just as pretty if his hair was dried out and, and combed out and everything. But, uh, yeah, there you go. That's the two raccoons. And actually, while we were getting these, two other guys were out checking some other traps. And they actually got two foxes uh, on their trap line. So, we'll uh, just try again tomorrow and see if we can not get us something a little bit fancier than the daggone raccoon. All right, guys, I don't really know what's going on. I know we have over a hundred traps easily on this property, and we just ain't been catching a whole lot of a whole lot of nothing. You know what I'm saying? We got the two raccoons. This, by the way, this is day four. Yesterday we got the two raccoons. Uh, the other guys that were uh, out trapping caught two uh, gray foxes. We just ran all the traps, nothing until this. Check this little guy out. There he is. Nice little gray fox, just chilling. What's up, buddy? See if we can get closer without him tearing my head off. Check him out, y'all. Look how pretty he is. Just chilling. Well, that's one more predator down on this property. Uh, Mr. Chuck's gonna go ahead and dispatch him, and then we're gonna, I'll show him when, uh, after he's dispatched, you get a real close look at how, how pretty this animal is. Here we go. She's been dispatched. Very pretty animal. Very good coat on. Look at that black stripe down the tail. That is a good looking fox. Old foxy lady. So we finished up the trap and didn't get as much as we were hoping. Uh, thought we would get a coyote, to be honest, which I had coyote tracks everywhere. But we did end up with that gray fox, and we actually ended up with a couple other gray foxes. I wasn't with them when they were setting them, uh, when they were checking them traps. I think they got a possum or anything. But anyway, I'm out here in south, southwest Louisiana, lake south of Lake Charles, with my buddy Thunder. He's around there somewhere taking me duck hunting. But we're gonna go ahead and try that black that black fox now. We're gonna try that gray fox. Uh, got the coals lit right there, boys. Got the coals heating up. We got us a nice little fire kicking. And as soon as them coals get heated up, I'm gonna season them little back straps, them little gray fox back straps. We're gonna slap them on the grill, see what they taste like, see if it's like gnawing on rubber or whatnot. Uh, one of the guys here said uh, he knows somebody who runs a deer lease or a deer uh, guide service, something, something, something rather like that. And uh, they said that fox is pretty good if you cook it right, but. I got a feeling we're probably not going to cook it right. We're just going to stick it on the grill and uh, try not to cook it too well done. But, you know, I don't know. We'll uh, see what it tastes like. All right, y'all, there's the back straps. Meat don't look bad. Looks similar. Ooh, there we go. Get a little little, little Tony's on there, a little Cajun Creole seasoning on there. And we're going to flip it. We're just going to do this real simple right on the grill and uh, see what it tastes like. If it, uh, if it don't taste completely nasty... Next time I get one, we might cook it low and slow or something and figure it out. But here you go, Thunder. You might as well mind holding this camera for me. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Point that. Just point that right at me. We'll get this on the grill. Question is, how long do we cook it? I don't think these things have any diseases, but uh, I guess we'll find out. All right, look at this right here. Got some sausage on the grill too, but that looks like it's about done. Might be a little overdone, but that's all right. I'd rather be overdone than underdone at this point, just to make sure that we survived this, you know what I'm saying? Not that I think that's going to be an issue, but... <laughs> Set it right here on this here brick. I'm going to cut her open and see what it looks like. I mean, it looks like good meat. Oh, look at that. Mmm. I mean, look at that. 
It don't look half bad. Hmm. That kind of. Holy bon? crap, dude. C'est bon. Ça c'est bon. Oh man, I wish I'd have kept the whole fox now. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all come try this. Hold on, let me cut you a piece. Said it's tender. Oh man. Dude, I am not lying at all. That is good. Who's that? Really good, man. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Give me that camera. Taste that, my friend. Oh my lord. Look at that. That is not fox. Dude, that is fox. That is that's some of the best wild game I ever had. That's very good, Vinny. Wow. Dead gum. Now I'm going to trap some fox. That is good. Holy crap, that's good. Vinny, that is good. Wow. I was not expecting that. Honestly, I was expecting it to be a little bit tough, maybe a little gamey because it's a predator, but. It looks like steak. It looks like sirloin. I know. It look, even looks like sirloin. See if y'all can get a, get a good look at. Come on, focus, camera. Yeah, look at that. That is good, Benny. Good job. Holy cow. That ain't nothing but a little bit of Tony Sacherets on a barbecue pit. Mm. Good job, buddy. That's surprising. I was not expecting it to taste like that. And tender. Very tender. Man, that is that's surprising. That's I am genuinely surprised. Well, there you go, guys. You never know unless you try it. So I tried it. Now I know. Now I know any fox I get is going home with me, mm -hmm. going in the refrigerator, going in the freezer, going on the pit. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure y'all stay tuned if you like these trapping videos because I'm going to be doing some more around the house. Next uh, goal is going to be a coyote because if a fox tastes like that, yeah, we're going to see what a coyote tastes like. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more bobcat around the house because that's really good. But anyway, thank you guys again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button if you like it. Subscribe if you have it. And stay tuned because there will be a duck hunting video coming with old Thunder, wherever he ran off to. Oh, there you go. Gonna get us some more firewood. But uh, yeah, catch y'all on the next one.